I'll just start recording. Um, so, for the first question, and if you have any questions, you can always go back to look at the, so everything is written on the screen. And then I see the second question. So for the second question, I'm gonna erase all of them. So here you can still see that. And If you check the recording afterward, then you can stop at the beginning. So when everything is on the screen. Okay, second question. How many questions we have? Only six. Okay. So a kilogram rubber, rubber ball is dropping from the initial height. Oh, it's all about this kind of, okay. From initial height of three meters and each bounce a it returns to 75% per village previous height. What is the initial mechanical energy of the ball just after it is released from the initial height? Mechanical energy of the ball. So, um, so basically this involves energy. So you guys wanna start like um, thinking yourself and then when you get stuck then I can get some help or you want me just like uh, show you my thinking process okay. I'll show you my thinking process so let's say this is one kilograms rubber ball and the height is three meter so this is ground. Uh, each bounce returns seventy percent of previous height. What is the initial mechanical of the ball? Just after it is released from its initial height. So this, I think, this in the mechanical energy is the um, potential energy, right? Eep. equals to okay, use test. Okay, EP, potential energy equals to uh, MGH, basically, right? And then you can say, because the initial actually drops just after it is released. So basically this is, we said in the, the potential potential energy is always like a base on the ground as the baseline, and then how much we see, then uh, we measure the heights. So this one, and so just put the values back here. M is one kilogram, G is uh, okay. Here it didn't give you the G, but you can use G as nine point eight or ten. You can, if you don't have, you don't really know which one, you can ask your professor. It doesn't make any difference. And the H is three meters. Uh, okay, so the question. So for the second question, how much the mechanic, mechanic energy does the ball lose during its first bounce? Okay, so, so, the first bounce is like a like a whole three meters, and the second bounce will be three times seventy five percent, right? So the height, okay, height one is uh, three meters. Height two, the second bounce will be equal to three times seventy five percent meters. And they ask you uh, what, what, how much the mechanical energy, which is the potential energy, lose over the second bounce. Right. Okay. So, I mean, the height, the height loss is uh, one point 
So basically, uh, dot dot e equals to mg mgh one minus mgh two equals to mg h1 minus h2 and h1 so it's basically 25 percent of uh, three meters because you that's mg times three times Twenty-five percent. But I, but I don't okay, I don't want to confuse. But just try to calculate the three minus three times. I have calculated that. Uh, three times point seventy-five is two point two five. Okay, three minus two. Point two five. So this is the second question. Question two. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So how much a mechanical energy is lost during the second bounce? Huh? That's about. Well, Louis, during this first bounce, or oh, the second bounce. So this is the first bounce. So basically, you have to find the third bounce. Uh, sorry, second bounce. Um, second bounce will be H, will be H3, right? Yes, that's right, H, H2, oh, sorry, H3 equals to H2 times 75%. So you just do the same thing. Makes sense. This is more easy, right? I was thinking, or maybe I can ask you a question. Uh, after how many bounces the, the ball stops? So this oh, um, per, um, how about what hap when it says what happens to this energy? Uh, sorry? For the first one. After we found out um, how much energy does the ball lose, how will we answer what happens to this energy? Okay, repeat it one more time, sorry. How can we answer like what happens to this energy for the first? How the energy changes after the first bounce? Oh no, my bad. Um, for B, that what we're doing right now. Well, um, <laughs> hold on. I'll, I'll ask the question later. Ask the question later. Yeah, yeah, the second part of B is what I was asking for, but never mind. So. Oh. Oh, what happened to the US energy? You mean? Yeah, that part. Okay. Uh, so what happened to this energy? So basically, uh, so this ball drops here and then uh, then bounce back. Why it cannot bounce back to initial height? So this is energy loose, right? If it can bounce back to the uh, initial three meters, it means there's no energy loose. But now it can only reach the 75%. What happens to this energy? Why this energy is lost? Any ideas? So this, this energy, so oh, we have to see the ball, what it, what it contacts the ball. So the ball, there's no contact, no, no contact, no contact until it reaches to the ground. So it passes some energy to the ground because it touches. It's also, also we, have, we, we know the ball, is have a, the ball has a, um, let's say the ball, when ball reaches here, the ball has the initial speed here basically reach to the maximum initial speed. And then this, this initial speed, like 
So basically we convert the mechanical energy to the kinetic energy, right? And the kinetic energy, when, when the ball reaches to the ground, it converts to the thermal energy to the ground. Or it just like it pass, uh, pass the energy. Um, so when the ball reaches to the ground, we know it's, it has the, the maximum um, max uh, in, in speed. And then uh, it's, it's pointing down. And then we know the second bounce, the ball start pointing up. I mean, the, the speed is pointing up. So this one, they definitely, so the ball has a uh, um, pass the energy to the to the ground. And then the, the basically um, the ground pushes the ball up. So that's why the, in, the speed has changed. Um, so the energy could be um, convert to thermal thermal energy to the ground. You can see the energy this energy um, uh, reach to the ground and convert to uh, convert to the thermal energy. So the, the ball lose some energy. When the second time when 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 the first bounce back, uh, it cannot reach to the uh, same height. Right. Any questions for the second one? Any questions for second one? Uh, no. Okay, let's move to the side. A uh, 10 gram bullet is shooting through a one kilogram wood block suspended on a string two meters long. The center of the mass, try to think of this. The center of the mass of the block rests a distance of 10 or uh, one centimeter. Find the speed of bullet as it emerges from the block. If its initial speed is 450. Uh, let's see, scroll something. So a bullet is coming this way. And uh, so a 10, Kilogram wood block suspended on the string of, okay, so here is the wood block on the string two meters long, this is two meters long. The center of the mass of the block raising a distance of one centimeter, from the speed of bullet that emerges from the block if it's in natural speed it is. Okay, I try to understand. The center of the mass, okay, here the center rise at this size of one centimeter. Find the speed of bullet as it emerges from its or uh, emerges from block of its initial speed of 450. So this is my understanding is it still convert the it's energy about energy converting. Okay, so let me, let me describe this process. Say uh, so what happened. So this is the bullet. This is the wood block, and then uh, the bullet uh, shoot through this block, this wood block, and then um, the block. We, the center of the ma mass of the block rests a distance of one centimeter. So because the bullet, and uh, the speed of bullet, at, find the speed of bullet at a, as it emerges. So what we try to find is the speed of bullet 
emerges from the block. Okay, the initial speed of the um, bullet is 450. So is it saying the bullet went through the block and we have to find the speed yes. after it, it went through it? This will be T. So basically we know like before there's, okay, there's the energy. Definitely this one is smaller than 450 because the kinetic energy of bullet passed to this wood block. And then, um, then it has like afterward um, the VT. So we have to figure out how much energy consume. Uh, so we can do, uh, so we can write down what do we need here. We need the EK, kinetic energy, equals to one over two mv squared, right? Uh, so we know, um, so we know the mass is ten gram and the velocity four fifty. So it's for the initial one. So we want to figure out energy, energy lost, and then the kinetic two. Let's put it down. So the equation will be kinetic two equals to e one minus E lost. And also E two equals to uh, equals to one over two M V T square. T square. And then we can find V T. Uh, so the, the key part here we, is we try to find the lost energy. Um, so how do we find the lost energy? Wood block suspended on a string two meters long. So we... So I, I'm kind of confused. So the string two meters long is is this to measure slow? Okay, let's see if there is a something. So this is this one holding two meters long string and this uh, wood block. We can see. So after the bullet shooting this uh, wood block, the uh, matter of the, the center of mass raise rise one centimeter. So this is so the the kinetic the kinetic energy convert to the wood blocks the kinetic energy of a bullet convert to part of them convert to the wood blocks potential energy. So we can see, okay, see here, here we can set. Um, We can set it here, uh, initial here is zero for the potential energy. And when it reaches to one centimeter, we use E equal to E potential. Potential, potential equal to MGH. Uh, MG. H and the delta e potential equal to mt delta h delta h. So this delta h is the change, which is one centimeter. Make sense? Okay. So first, uh, so the bullet convert its kinetic energy to uh, part to 
a small portion of the potential energy of wood block and then uh, traveling, traveling again. So this makes sense, right? And the, so the problem is we want to say because the energy is uh, constant, like we, we uh, so in the whole system, so the, we want to find, figure out what's the loss of energy so we can calculate the kinetic energy. Therefore, we can find the, uh, uh, the speed of the bullet. So we have to find the loss of energy because we, we can calculate the, the initial kinetic energy minus the loss of energy. And then we use this one to equal to one over uh, half mvt squared. We can calculate the vt. Um, any questions? Or you got it confused? Okay, so we would plug in um, the 450 the initial velocity into the, the e kinetic of the first one? Yes. But you understand the logic? Yeah, but then for the last one, how would we find the what would we do for the last one? Uh, that's why you want to figure out the speed, right? We are asking you to find the speed of bullet at least emerges from the block. So we where got stuck. Two minus one. No, no, no. I, I don't I don't even think we use this screen at all. So this two meters and the one centimeter also make sure that you need. Um, okay, have a change in height will be initial two minus. No, the initial, I mean, I don't think that this two meters has anything here unless we put the ground here. If we put the ground here, then it will be minus mgh, which is two, right? Then we change the two to, to, uh, to 1.99. So we ch might change the difference there. But the, like I can, we can just put the ground as this, um, the center of the mass is zero, zero, zero as g. So it only rises, red, only rise one centimeter. Right. So maybe this value is just to confuse you, I think. But I mean, you can also use this value if you want to, but just make it the whole process more complicated because then you have to measure this minus zero. So MGH will be MGH, MG, MG times two. And then the second H2 will be two minus uh, point, 0.1 centimeter uh, meter. 
So the second of H will be 9.9, but sorry, 1.99. So that's the difference, but still it's one centimeter. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, we don't have to use this too, but make sense? Uh, do you have any technique of like, since we don't have to answer all of them, of like seeing which ones could be easier to solve? Oh, sorry, I say that again. Like, do you have any technique to see which question would be easier to solve since we don't have to answer all of them? Uh, question you mean in this question? No, like in general. Oh yeah, if you don't know, I mean, so because after we uh, re finish the question reading, after we read the question, we can't even know what the kind of process, right? And it really depends on you, where you set the boundary, where, where you set the um, ground state. So if you set here, I mean, it's fine. You, you get the same result, but just like you, you can put it two meters and then 1.99, 1.9. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, like, like all the questions, like we're going to be giving 12 and he said most kids only finish like 60%. So just to choose the easiest ones. Oh, like, then you cannot uh, tell. Unless maybe you will see the similar questions we discussed here. You say, oh, I already know that you can work on that. Otherwise, if so, uh, my strategy for that is like you read it, you can try to read the questions or some part, like for example, if you like to do the uh, like this, um, I don't know, the motion part, like the calculate the distance, calculate the acceleration speed, you're very good at that. They try to pick all these questions out. Or if you're good at uh, doing the energy, calculate the energy, then you can, you can easily tell, like uh, they ask you, you see the stopping distance or the uh, me mechanical energy. So you can easily tell like which one you want. Y you know where, which one you're good at. At least you can do better compared to the other one. You can pick that. Or if you like, you can pick like maybe four of them that like you already know very easy. And then the rest, maybe you can just read the question. See if you have, a, after you read one time, if you can have a basic general idea about the question, what they want you to solve. If you don't have no idea, like let's see here, we got a, like a little bit confused about the center of a mass of block rest one distance, rest one centimeter. Get a little bit. We have to try to understand how the the motion, um, how how the how it moves. Uh, then we can figure out what we will try to solve. So, like for example, if we first see this question, you don't know um, where to start or where what what to say, and then you maybe can move to the next one. You have a like general idea about which question what question they ask you. So that's my strategy. Um, but it, definitely you will not, you don't know anything before if you don't read the question. It's hard to make a decision. Basically you can read the question first. See how much you are confident uh, to solve that. Did I answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any question for the question three? No? Okay. Clear all draw drawings because it, later I'll post this recording if you guys want to read it. Look at it again. Clear all things. Okay. We want to, uh, question four, we want to use a 100 kilogram flywheel to store energy. The flywheel is in the shape of uniform solid disk. So, okay. There's a radius of two. The proven structure of failure of flywheel. The maximum allowed riddle um, acceleration of a point on its rim is. 5,000 meters per square second. 
but you must connect the energy that can be stored in the library. The moment of inertia for uniform sleep is like this. Okay, so this one we have to calculate. Let me set some equations I forgot on the kinetic energy on the kinetic energy. Of energy of the uh, circular motion. Um, let's see. Okay, so we have uh, um, the rotational kinetic, kinetic energy would be kinetic energy equal to one over half, and the moment of initial omega square. And, uh, Okay, so basically we use this equation to solve this. What's the maximum kinetic energy? So I equal to one over half m r squared. So m is a hundred kilogram. R is two meters. So we can solve this one, right? No. And then omic, how do we solve omic? Omic equals to, so uh, V equal to R omic, 
only equals to v over l. Okay. R is two, v maximum two thousand meters per second. Make sure when we try to calculate MC, make sure the unit okay, is fine. So this one, you try to calculate the moment of inertia. And this one, you try to calculate the, um, the angle velocity. Make sense? Uh, any questions? So you wanna like, uh, do I make it to, does it not look uh, very straightforward? We can start from somewhere to make it more, just let me know your, your, your like where, where you are. Which part of your thinking still? Do you guys prefer to uh, do the recitation on Zoom or in person? If you like to do in person, we can do, we can come to campus next time. Are you in person? Quantity is plug in. Oh, sorry, I didn't see the chat. Okay, so maybe next time, because um, like, uh, yeah, next time we, we put it back to in person, but all, also the attendance will be taken anyways. If you have questions, you can stop by. We can we can use Blackboard in the um, in Marshall. Okay, so uh, let me see. So basically, we see kinetic energy. Okay, we, we can try to plug it. Okay, so we have different opinions. Yeah, I know some people have to travel, especially bad weather in the winter. So um, yeah, we will, we will see. Um, so I equal to one over half m m times 100 times r squared 2 times 2. This is i. So we can get this is 200. Uh, what's, the, what's the unit of the moment in each of? Kilometer square. Kilometers. I don't remember. Do you guys remember the unit? Okay, we can just try to calculate here. Um, kilogram, kilogram, because this is kilogram, right? This is kilogram, this is uh, meter square, meter square. Okay, and uh, omega equals to V five thousand uh, over R. Uh, over i over two plus two two five zero two five zero zero. So this one will be meter v. per square per second square 
давайте. Вы забыть. Yes, you're right. Of course, I saw this is at this is the okay. Yes, we don't can I this one? Oh, this will be the observation. So we have to find find the equation for a little acceleration. That little acceleration. Yeah. And we can find the. Uh, the angular acceleration. Speed of angular speed. Okay, so we can we can we have this acceleration then we can um we can use this uh little acceleration a equal to v squared over r right we, maybe you can calculate v and then after we calculate v we can omega equal to v over r to calculate omega and put this omega square back here. Or actually we can calculate, this is one way, another way is A equals to, um, wait, let me think. Yeah. Yes, you can use this one. Wait, is this it? Is it right equation or not? Little acceleration. Okay, wait a minute. I think we need to do some conversion first. We need acceleration. So the, the, the total acceleration should be the um, 
So total acceleration is different from the um, little acceleration and different from tangential acceleration. So try to do the acceleration. You can use a equal to omega square over r uh, time r time r. But I feel like this one is tangent. This is called tangent for acceleration. This one is little acceleration. I try to think the little acceleration and relationship. Uh, Uh, read the observation is a central pedal observation, right? I just Google it. Can we try this one? I, I found this one. Um, What do you guys think? Central panel, yes. So is this from the textbook, the secretion? Because I'm a little bit confused about the central panel. Apparently, uh, Braden, Braden gave us, gives us uh, Single pedal, single pedal acceleration. So does it equals to the um, tangential acceleration? Yeah, I mean, if it has AC. Central 
Can someone explain the tangential acceleration and angular acceleration? What's the difference? Let us see. It's been a long time. I Oops. Changing the directions. Tangent acceleration, simplified acceleration, and the uh, matter. So here, radial acceleration, we, we know the equation for radial acceleration v square over r. So we can solve v. And the omega, we can solve v over r. v square over r. Um, radial, radial. I should be difficult, right? Yeah. Riddle acceleration formula. Riddle acceleration is V square. So if we plug in together, maybe, let me see what, what do we get? So, A equals to V square over R equals to V over, okay, V equals to R omega. But I'm not sure if they are same. But, uh, so it's omega square. Uh, times R. Mm. I'm not a hundred percent sure. 
there, so this is little, little acceleration. And uh, we also have a tangent hole acceleration. I think the tangent hole acceleration is um, associated with the uh, angular acceleration. Mm -hmm. well, now maybe you can ask the professor. Um, I'm not sure. So any 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 question uh, any like uh, inputs? Okay, yes. So, Brandon sent the um, explanation in the, in the chat. So, if we, we can use this radial acceleration to solve the angular, angular speed, what, why we still need a tangential acceleration? Y is for speed, Y is for direction. Yeah, V, v square over R equals to R omega square. Maybe I, I should ask my colleagues. It's always, every time I have a question like that, I always get confused. Um, tangent solution. The, 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 the main idea is to try to solve the moment of inertia and the um, angular speed. Yeah. Okay. Um, we just leave you for now. Do you guys think this is helpful? Sorry, I'm young. <laughs> uh, so maybe next time, I didn't know uh, Professor posts the questions on Blackboard. Um,
let's see. Do you want to work on the next question or just stop here? This is the case. Um, Could we just do the last question fast? Like, like, yes. Yeah, ask your question. Oh, no, no, the last question, okay. number five, number five. Sorry. Number five. Uh, driver comes off of spring board. His arms are straight back, like straight down. Uh, spring board, spring board. Giving her a momentum initial by her rotation axis of surgery six. Okay, this is the moment of inertia. And uh, she then tuck in this number, decreasing the moment of inertia to this. Okay. Now tuck to mix for a complete revolution in one second. Okay, we can do this one to calculate speed, right? If she has a toggle that out, how many revolutions does she have to make in three seconds from board to water? A diver, sorry, a diver comes off a springboard. Okay, so basically, um, the moment of initial is constant here. Wait, wait, is it, no, no, it's not constant. What I want to say is, um, so when you have a, like a bigger radius, like when you have your arms and legs like a, a pulling up, then you have a bigger radius when it uh, tackle into a small ball that has a smaller radius. Uh, so this is a key part to solve this question. So um, for a complete in one second. So for a complete second. So it's 0.25 revolutions per Revolution per second per so okay so we, we try to solve the speed here the kinetic energy is uh, remain the same so we have uh, so we can see this equation here so moment of inertia we give you, we don't calculate. So the first one is 36, second one is 7.2. And the only difference, so the kinetic energy will remain the same because there's no other um, forces work on her. Uh, so we, so as you can see, like when do spring, you have a bigger one that you uh, like uh, rotate slower. Then if you have a smaller radius, you rotate faster. Uh, so then we have to calculate the, the speed. And then we have this um, for complete, complete revolution in one second, we can calculate. Uh, so we can do this one. We do this one, this one, then we have the, uh, Calculate to be red per second. How many red per second for the for the first omega? Okay, we can we can do this way. Um, so for complete revolution is three sixty degree times four divided by four complete in one second. So that means, um, so I'm 
<laughs> no, we don't, we don't divide it by four. So this is the whole degrees, um, degrees in one second. So this is per second. And the second one, uh, we, we just want to figure out how much, uh, how many degrees in one second. And then um, times three. Three second is it how many revolution right and then the first thing we have to do is the speed the angular speed angular speed degree we can as long as we make the unit uh same um so the unit so because k1 we put it here k1 equal to k2 and equals to you know, K1 equals to 1 over 2 I 36 times 36 times omega 1 square. K2, K2 equals to 1 over 2 point 7.2. Oh my God, two square. So K1 equal to K1 equal to K2. So we can do the um, 36 divided by seven. 36. So we want to just use uh, W1 to represent it, W2. This is what we want to do. So 36, 36 divided by 7.2, or to five. So five, so then, so 36 divided by 7.2, one square, equals to only two square. So then omega. So this one, 36 divided by 7.2 is five. So we have uh, five omega one square equal to omega two. Omega two square. So omega two equals two. Uh, how much? Square root. Five omega one. Uh, then we have the, the, the speed of omega one equals to how much is okay. Um, is it So this is one second it, it rotates for, for 60 times four. And then, then W2 will be square root, square root. This is square root. Two point two three. Okay. Uh, square root of five is two point two three times three sixty times four degrees per second. Second. And so they want to see per second. They want to know how many uh, revolutions to make in three seconds. So, um. 
So basically, it's 2.23 times 360 times 4 times 3 is a total degrees. Total degrees. And then you want to see revolution divided by 360. So uh, the total. Divided by three sixty equals three two point two three times four divided by three. Oh, sorry, times four divided by three. Divide. What do you think? So how much is it? Times four divided by three. Oh my. Okay, so this is two point nine revolutions. Revolutions. That that makes sense. So we can try to test if it's true because when it's tucked, uh, she should uh, rotate faster. When she tuck, tucked, she has she can complete four complete revolutions. But when she is like a uh, not tucked, she had to spend three seconds to make two point nine revolutions. So it makes sense, right? So when you like a uh, stretching, okay, let it, let it, let it check. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Brenda, you have questions? Oh, it's fine. Thank you for being here because I, I saw that I'm, I'm, I'm the only one left. I didn't know it's already past the time. Okay, bye, Brandon.